Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back the legendary Jackie Joseph, and we are coming up on the 60th anniversary of Little Shop of Horrors, and she's going to be signing along with Jonathan Hayes, um, September 13th through the 15th at Monster, Son of Monster Palooza in Burbank, and I can't wait. I'm going to be there. And she's coming on the show today to promote that. And I'd also like her to say some nice words about uh, her friend, the legendary Dick Miller, who passed away back in January. Jackie is a sweet lady. I loved interviewing her last year, and it's going to be great to have her back on. So, uh, yeah, here is my new interview with Jackie Joseph. Hey, Jackie. Yeah. Hey, welcome back. How are you? I'm good. That's uh, what we're doing. Oh, talk about, um, you know, little, little Shop of Horrors, you know, legacy and uh, promote, you know, uh, your appearance at Southern Monster Palooza. I would love to. And also I want to uh, ask you, are we, are we doing this right this second? Is it, are we live? Oh, yeah, I'm recording and I edit uh, around things. Oh, okay. Now you're recording. Okay, well, then I'll just put it in your ballpark and uh, wait for you to ask a question. Okay. Oh, my God. So <clears throat> we're coming up on 60 years since The Little Shop of Horrors was made, which is quite phenomenal. Um, it's a, it's a, oh, go on. You're <laughs> kidding. <laughs> it is. I mean, you know, it's, it's a timeless classic. Um, it's a gem of a movie that was made in just two days. Um, did you think at all uh, when you when you were making the movie that you were creating something magical? Uh, we didn't have time to think. <laughs> <laughs> we were running from uh, scene to scene. Uh, we were creating something that was bizarre. We were, we, we were creating something that we had to finish by midnight. And... Um, Frankly, all that I really thought about was how fun it was to be in the movies. Mm -hmm. This movie um, continues to delight audiences with uh, midnight movie showings in theaters and show it late at night on UHF TV stations across the country. When you do these um, these signings, uh, what's the fan reaction like? Well, I tell you, uh, first of all, it's so stunning how uh, it's taken on a life of its own. And, and the fans, of course, are totally unique. Like, for instance, I don't go out very much. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but I have been uh, in the past. And say you go to a show uh, for Andy Griffith and the Mayberry gang of people. And mm -hmm. it's just like Everybody, it is the family next door, and all you think is happy, happy smiles. Right. And when you go to a, a show that is uh, honoring monsters, you see people walk around with scars and blood dripping down their faces. <laughs> and and in, in, uh, in horrifying masks. And, and bizarre wardrobe. But the thing is, when they come up to talk to you, they sound just like the Mayberry people. You know, they're just mm -hmm. nice, friendly, neighborly folks. And uh, it's just that their, their passion is, uh, is all this weirdness. Or maybe to them it's not weird at all. What do you think? I think, um, you know, that the internet has really enabled um, these movies to live on, you know. Um, you know, I think it got to a point in the mid two thousands where people were watching a lot less television, and I think the internet has really kept these cult movies going. Well, yes, quite a bit, and uh, they get people who can uh, find someone uh, in common to talk with. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how many in their everyday life they, uh, they could really schmooze about this, this kind of art form. But uh, I have to tell you that the people related to this adventure are so wonderful. I mean, but in the cast and the crew and, 
and everybody who grew up in production, mm-hmm. they, they were just, they're just wonderful people. And, and um, I had such great friends. And uh, this current Monster Palooza is kind of honoring Dick Miller, right. uh, at least our little part of it. And uh, Deb Roger Corman is coming on Sunday. Did you know that? Oh, yes. I'm looking forward to that. And um, I think Joe Dante is coming, uh, mainly because he was a great uh, aficionado of uh, Dick Miller. He used him all the time. Yeah. And it's just nice to be in their company. Like Joe Dante Mm -hmm. is the kindest, sweetest man in the world. And I've never heard him be harsh, no matter how many crazy gremlins were it were malfunctioning while shooting that very difficult movie for both of them. And, uh, Dick Miller and I uh, played a married couple, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Putterman, right. the gremlins. But uh, uh, the little shop of horrors, Dick Miller uh, was someone who came in as a customer because he loved to eat flowers. <laughs> and he was so matter of fact about it. And he actually came on the set um, because we didn't have all that much time and mm-hmm. just sat there munching on a bunch of flowers. He, <laughs> you know, he's just an honest actor and a, a most darling person. You know, we just lost him within a year and um, missed him so terribly. But, uh, but he lives on with his fans and with events like this So I'm looking forward to it. Um, the coming weekend. Yeah. I mean, it's not this coming weekend, but yeah, um, the, the weekend after that, right? Mm-hmm. What when he passed away in January? How did you find out, and what was uh, your reaction? Well, I I found out through his wife, Laney. Um, yeah, L- Laney let us know and uh, a mailing to all of his friends and it was very stunning because we were all together just a short time before that uh, at the end of December uh, for Dick's 90th birthday and and he was so charming and fit and and dancing you know he, he was a, a, a great modern dancer and he he very much uh, danced with Lainey. They used to go to big band events every week, I think, mm-hmm. ever since I knew them. I, this is probably not interesting to you, but I just <laughs> love it. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's very nice. What, what was it about him that made his presence on screen so likable and, and easy for everyone to work with? It was very pleasant for me because, uh, first of all, he had never displayed temper. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I played his wife several times in different films. But he was uh, easygoing. Um, he, first of all, he told the truth as an actor, so it was just so easy to work with. And even in a ridiculous movie like Little Shop of Horrors or uh, especially the Gremlins where we got uh, run over by a snow plow mm-hmm. and uh, driven by uh, Gremlins having fun. But, uh, and then we were resurrected uh, for the second movie. Uh, yeah. And they said the Futterman's are feeling much better now. <laughs> <laughs> Much better than dead people, for sure. So, um, so we had a wonderful time at doing Gremlins too, because we uh, we got to go to New York. And we got to um, have free locks. You know, but we were just celebrating every morning in a trailer with all the locks and bagels we could eat. It was. You know, there's something about free food and actors that um, it's like 
world go down in a blaze of glory eating rocks. It, we, we really had fun. And Lainey was with us too. She, I think she was our, uh, you know, our, our collector. She would go and bring in plates and we'd just sit in the trailer and eat. So I, I think I'm exaggerating a bit, but it's just a memory of it all. It just filled me with good glee. Yeah, I, I talked to Lainey back in June, and she told me that um, Dick was just the type of guy that would just light up the room with a smile. Well, and effortless. He wasn't on. He was just Dick. And, um, you know, he, he had that little uh, happy glint in his eye, but he was never a hey, look at me kind of guy. He was just a good guy. And what I loved at his birthday party was that it featured not only the people he worked with and his career, but it talked a lot about his family and his brothers and his children, and everybody was paying tribute to him uh, from different decades of his life. So it was really about the, the human. And, and he just had a, a faster life than Dick the actor. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so we were lucky just just to know him. And, and Dick and Lainey, you know, they had a uh, another marriage ceremony, which was very fun. And then this was after uh, all the gremlins and Little Shop, of course, but everybody who were friends, came back and saw them married one more time. And they were just as happy and loving, um, probably one of the best couples I've ever known. Mm-hmm. And then just as a, a co-star, uh, he was, it was a privilege to, just to work with him. And then, of course, Jonathan Hayes is going to be at the... Uh, at the Monster, Monster Palooza. Right. Is, is this Monster Palooza the son of Monster Palooza? It's son of Monster Palooza, yeah. I think it's so funny that Monster Palooza has a son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I always loved uh, Dick's performance in the movie Bucket of Blood, which was made before Little Shop of Horrors, because it's one of the rare times that he played a very vulnerable, mild character, because he was always playing kind of tough guys who had bad tempers. Yes. And he he had told me about this while we were making Little Shop, about Bucket of Blood. And um, mm-hmm. I, was go, I was in a musical called The Billy Barnes Review, and we were going to England uh, the spring of 1960 to do... Uh, an English uh, little tour with our Billy Barnes review. And when I was in Scotland, um, you know, just for a week walking around, looking at famous places, there there was something called the Scottish Historical Society. And they had like a little placard of what was coming up as far as entertainment. And they had a sign saying, Bucket of Blood will be showing. (laughs) <laughs> and then so that's where I saw Bucket of Blood with the Scottish uh, Historical Society and of course I had a lot of friends in that movie uh, besides Dick mm-hmm. which uh, Bert, Bert Cosby was in the Billy Barnes review so and uh, he was an unlikely player in, in Bucket of Blood but he was very important in it mm-hmm, certainly it's, it's also the uh, 35th anniversary of Gremlins this year. Are, are you still getting recognized for that movie a lot? People just love that movie. And, um, you know, I, I don't know about getting recognized because I don't just hang out in the public very much. <laughs> but, you know, people that I know know I've done it. And, um, and you know, the longer time goes by, the the bigger deal it becomes. Uh, mm-hmm. that more and more people know about it and becomes more of a uh, 
a historical document. And, you know, suddenly you're uh, one of the few survivors of this and that, um, which, which, you know, makes me uh, quake a little bit. But at least we're going to go have a good time uh, at the, uh, uh, the Burbank uh, event. Mm-hmm. And I heard they're going to they're gonna do a, uh, another Gremlins movie. You did? Yeah. Tell me about it. I, I, I don't know. I see Joe Dante uh, on Sunday, I believe, uh, at, at the Marriott uh, Burbank Hotel and Convention Center. Uh, and, but, and, and that's on September 13th through 15th, by the way. Mm-hmm. I know. And giving an obvious plug to this uh, fan show that is so fun. Can I tell you a funny fan story? Oh, go right ahead. Okay. I was sitting at my little table, um, and I saw in the distance the biggest, scariest man I've ever seen. And he was wearing orange pants with, instead of polka dots or anything, it was like little Frankensteins were all over his pants. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's the kind of person that you would cross many streets not to uh, be in the vicinity of. But <laughs> he, I saw him making a beeline for my boot. And I kept thinking, think of something to say. Think of some <laughs> nice little comment so uh, he won't just be dumbfounded. And he, he came up and I said, no, I said, those are such interesting pants you're wearing. And he, he leaned down and he said in a very confidential tone, you know, Miss Joseph, this is one of the few places I can really wear these pants. <laughs> I thought there, there is just something so um, preciously stupid about that. Uh, Roger had a bet with somebody. No. That's the that's the story I've always heard. <laughs> okay. Well, he may have. He's certainly entitled to have had a bet with somebody. But there was something very critical about his finishing before midnight of 1959. Because we did shoot it uh, in the last two days of 1959. Mm-hmm. And... Because in 1960, the new contract for the Screen Actors Guild was going to go into force, and it was the first time residuals were going to be paid to actors. Oh. So this movie had to be finished before that contract uh, took action. Wow. That's that's a historical landmark. Wow. It is, and- and also, his, the reason he had 
that sound stage for those couple of days was that his brother, uh, Gene Carmen, mm-hmm. was doing another movie and finished. And he said, gee, I have a couple of days. You want to use the stage? It was all rented and everything. So they just quickly made a few phone calls, wrote a movie over the weekend, and voila, you know, there was a little shop. Wow, that that's amazing. It is amazing. And, uh, I was in New York. Uh, we had just finished up the Billy Barnes review, and I was wondering what to do with myself, and I got a call saying, uh, come immediately to L.A. And it was, a, it was going to be a detective movie, but while I was flying from New York to L.A., they rewrote it into this uh, flower-eating people movie. So... We just never know what's going to happen, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so September 13th through the 15th, you, Jonathan Hayes, and Lainey Miller will be signing at Cinema Monster Palooza at the Burbank Marriott, and you three will also be doing a panel to uh, tribute to Dick Miller along with Roger and Julie Corman on that Sunday, and Joe Dante, too, you said, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is a sterling group of, of historical film people. I mean, that is, they're the top of the line and greatly respected by all, all genres of film people because they made such a mark and then and, uh, part of Roger's mark and with this silly little Trudy movie. And, you know, he's so funny. He makes these monstrous things but he really is a very elegant man. He's like a country gentleman, very mm-hmm. polite. So uh, it's full of dichotomy, except for me. I'm really exactly like Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> you are a very sweet lady like Audrey is, and I'm, I'm so looking forward to meeting you all. I can't tell you how blessed I feel because as a child who watched these movies growing up, it's my biggest thrill that I can talk to you and you know and then the re- and the rest of you next weekend and Jackie I thank you so much for coming uh, back on again and I'll see you the following weekend okay and I hope we see a whole bunch of other people too oh yes I'm planning on being the the entire cast of phantasm is going to be there and so many so many great people no it be fun and uh, I, I hope Mm -hmm. Let's spread the word. (laughs) Uh, Thank you very much. My pleasure, Jackie. You have yourself a great day. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Jackie Joseph, sweetheart as always, and I'm glad we got to talk again. And everyone, please go to... Son of Monster Palooza at the Burbank Marriott September 13th through the 15th to meet Jackie and everyone else involved with that classic because this could be your last chance you never know this could be the last chance um, if you like this video everyone please subscribe to my YouTube channel add me as a friend on Facebook join my Tommy Kovac comedian page on Facebook follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Liar, dudes.